What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today I'm going to show you the last footage from the Peppa Grand Prix in the Czech Republic, where I did my competition last weekend and I've had an awesome experience and this was a back workout in that gym, probably about two days or one day after the competition not entirely sure but i was desperate to train my back actually i know it was two days because one day after the competition i really wanted to train my legs because before doing the contest you're not allowed to train your legs for about two entire weeks so i really was desperate to train those but anyway guys we're doing a back workout today why well, if you watched my contest video, you realize that my weak points were my hamstrings and the back thickness. And here you see my dad working out as well, as always, working out with us. So we're, of course, starting out with some rowing movements to target that back thickness, which you need to work on so much. And that's really what the fun thing about bodybuilding is, guys. Working on your weak points by actually taking an objective look at your physique. That is what classic bodybuilding is, sculpting your physique. So what I really learned to do more is really pull the weight with your elbows and not with your arms. Of course it sounds strange because you're always pulling with your arms, but you gotta envision pulling with your elbows. This makes the exercise a lot more difficult and actually makes the squeeze in your back a lot stronger and you want to train this way every bodybuilder who has a great back knows how to do it like that guys every single one of them of course some of greater genes than the others but i have pretty good genetics overall but if i don't do all the back exercises right you can definitely see that it has become a weak point the back width is good but for back thickness you need to do it in a certain way so that's why I started out with the seated row, the narrow grip one for the back thickness of the lower back and the wide grip one is more for the back thickness in the middle and higher back. But remember, don't try to pull the weight with your traps because your traps are very strong and it makes the weight very light. Try to pull it with your elbows and this automatically puts the stress on your back lower which is where mass accumulation is the most difficult. So that's why you want to do it in the most difficult, challenging way. Because the harder it is to pull the weight, the more you actually need to work on that specific part. Think about it. If it is more difficult to pull with your back a certain way, that means that that way of doing it requires you to do that more often because you're weaker in that area and if you're weaker usually there's less muscle mass as well and after those two rowing exercises it's time for a lat pull down behind the neck this is really to contract the traps but also the back thickness in the middle because when i'm going downwards i really contract the entire back Now here my coach Ferdi is explaining to me that you really have to pull it not only behind your neck but behind your head as far as possible. So imagine that the bar should go behind your back. This way you automatically pull back your shoulder blades and contract your back the way it is supposed to contract. Of course you need to be flexible to do this and I'm going to practice this a lot and this particular machine had a pretty low like those lag things that you put your leg under they're too low for me so i gotta sit like this and my dad is holding my legs down so i don't actually go upwards but this is the way that i'm trying to perform it really pulling the bar as far behind my head as possible and because i'm not used to training in that particular way it is still a little difficult but you really gotta try and envision pulling that bar behind your back forcing your shoulder blades to pull back together and contract for the back thickness development and it could also have to do with me grabbing the bar pretty wide i'm grabbing it a little wider than kane and if you look at kane here he can pull the bar a little back further than me it could be because of flexibility but it could also be because of the width that you hold the bar so i 
you guys, I want you to try this version out and feel the difference. Don't mind the weight, it is all about the contraction and the feeling in your muscles in your back. The more difficult and challenging it feels with correct form, the better it is. And not just the form, not just the execution, not just the exercises matter. You also got to push yourself beyond failure on those critical exercises. It is difficult to do on those seated row uh, apparatus because you can't really get a spotter to help you properly. But on this exercise, you can definitely get a spotter to help you past failure because just imagine if you can do 70 kilos five times, there might still be five more reps in the tank with 50 kilos, but you cannot do it because there's still 70 kilos on the machine. So when someone is pushing down, that person might push down with a force of 20 kilos, allowing you to still complete more reps, tiring out more muscle fibers and creating a higher muscle protein synthesis reaction. And of course, because this is the very last time that I'm going to be working out in this gym, I wanted to try as many different exercises as I could, especially the rowing movements. And I really like this machine. It has this chest support, which allows you not to have to balance your body, not to keep your body straight with your lower back. And it allows you to arch your back uh, very far without impinging any other muscle like your... Uh, spinal erectors you can really do it safely and by arching your back like that you can pull back your shoulder blades even more and feel a full contraction but don't only focus on the contraction even for back thickness the stretch is important because the further the stretch the longer it takes for the contraction to occur so there's a longer path that you have to travel off contracting muscles remember that and the last back exercise to finish off the back is the unilateral machine rows. I could have done dumbbell rows, but I really wanted to try out this machine because it's a really nice way of working the back, stretching the back, again with a chest support so you don't have to balance your own body in any other way except focusing on the stretch and the contraction of the back. And here you can really turn your body a little bit, contracting the lower back and the um, overall back really strongly and that is what you want to feel if you don't feel a contraction in the very back pull with your elbows if you don't feel anything anymore go lighter because then you're not pulling far back enough and then it is time for some preacher curls having a good preacher bench is rare in most gyms at least for me if you're pretty tall um, usually the bar actually hits those little safety bars at the very bottom and you don't get the range of motion that you're supposed to have but this one is perfect to me this really works the bicep peak and if you look at my Instagram at Wesley Vissers you can see that a picture that I posted very recently a comparison of me doing a front double biceps now versus four years ago and you can definitely see not only has the bicep grown but the peak has also increased so doing exercises like this consistently really does work guys it is not bro science although it hasn't been recorded in actual studies if you think logically and you target a certain part of a muscle more for example targeting the outer head of the bicep more than the inner head if you do this consistently years on end that part will grow a little bigger than the inside creating the bicep peak Also guys, you don't want to go too heavy on preacher curls like this or any bicep curls for that matter because you won't get the proper superior contraction that you need to develop that peak. If you go too heavy, you might simply target the whole biceps and even auxiliary muscle groups to pull and curl that weight and you don't want to do that. And this is actually where the camera battery, I don't think the battery, but the storage um, was full so I had to record it with my phone it should also record in 4k so I'm curious how it'll turn out on YouTube itself but right now we're doing rope 
hammer curls. This is very good for the brachialis. And now you can pretty much see that muscle in between my biceps and triceps. There's a little bulge there. And that little bulge actually makes your bicep look wider from the front. So if you have thin biceps from the front, which I have if I don't contract them, then you want to work um, them doing hammer curls because hammer curls directly work that part. And the brachialis muscle actually goes directly underneath the biceps too. So it is an overall development if you work that muscle and create hypertrophy in that area. And the last exercise of today in an old school gym like this, I can not stop this workout without doing a classic concentration curl that Arnold himself used to do. This also is a great peak builder for the biceps. As you can see right here, if you do it standing like this, you really want to keep your arms straight and pull and curl the dumbbell to the other shoulder of your other arm. That way you really contract the bicep in the correct way to build that bicep peak. Okay, and this footage right here is actually from actually a day before the competition. I haven't shown this particular footage yet because the footage I showed in this area was two days out. And right here you can see that I look a little different from in the video because here all the water weight was cut out. Uh, I was filled up with carbohydrates pretty much. All the salt was out. And in this workout itself, I had a little salt, so I looked a little more... Uh, watery and a little flatter as well because the water actually went under the skin letting the muscles appear less bulgy and I didn't have that many carbohydrates as I did right now. You always want to be careful after a competition you want to properly recover yourself by not overeating by drinking enough water and by actually replenishing your um, electrolytes as well. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching a lot. This was the last footage of my contest here. And now I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'll be getting ready for my contest in two and a half weeks. So I'm excited about that. Getting a lot leaner for sure. And don't forget to stay golden.